In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at um, a review of our trigonometry unit. So we're going to go through some key points first, and then we are going to look at some example questions. So the first key point is labeling the triangle. This is important um, because for, for right, ang right angle trig specifically, we need to know what sides we're dealing with. So the first side we can label is always going to be across from our 90 degree angle and this is going to be our hypotenuse. We now have our reference angle, which we can use to label our two other sides. Remember, across or opposite from our reference angle is going to be our opposite side, and then the last remaining side is our adjacent, because adjacent means beside, so this is beside our angle. When we're dealing with right angle triangles, there's only um, three ratios that we will be dealing with. We have our sine ratio, which is opposite over, sorry, sine of theta. Again, theta is an angle. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. We also have cosine. Cosine theta equals A over H. And finally, we have tan. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So these are all referring to when we find a side. If we were finding angles, it would be the same ratios, just slightly different. Because again, remember when we're finding angles, we have to use the inverse of our ratios. So it does change it slightly. When we move that ratio or that trig ratio across the equal sign, it becomes the opposite or the inverse. So this is for when we're finding an angle. Let's fix this top one here. And the idea of sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan opposite over adjacent just comes from this acronym SOCATOA. So that is something you can use as well to help you remember. Um, again, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So again, just an acronym to help you, but again, you do get to use your notes. Um, so you can always look back um, through this as well. Sine law. Sine law, there was basically one law that we used for both finding sides and angles. And sine law was a ratio or a fraction of sine of an angle and its corresponding side. And it was saying that that ratio is the same or equal to the ratio of every other angle in the triangle and its corresponding side. So that was our sine law formula. Again, the key thing with the sine law formula it's for non-right angle triangles. Cosine law, again, was for non-right angle triangles, and there were two different formulas. The first one, we had a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine a. This was for finding sides. And when we find angles, It's technically the same formula, just rearranged, but cosine A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared, all divided by 2BC. So again, um, you may remember from the notes there were a couple different variations, but the key thing is the angle or the side that you're looking for has to pair up with this angle. So they have to be a pair. Same with the angle you're looking for has to be paired up with this side or this side has to, or the, its complementary side has to be in this location of the formula. So just some things to be aware of um, when you're filling out the infer, or filling out the formula. So let's move into some examples. So in the first example, we want to find the length of the unknown side. In this case, they're both right angle triangles, so we're going to be using our one of our three trig ratios, sine, cos, or tan. The first thing we want to do is label our sides. 
we see our reference angle, we see our 90 degree angle, so we have enough to help us label. Again, remember, directly across from 90 degrees is our hypotenuse. Across from our reference angle is our opposite. And we can label our adjacent as well, just to get, just to get used to that. Once we label all of our sides, we want to figure out what sides are we dealing with. In this case, I know I have to be dealing with the opposite because I am looking for it. So I know one of my, my equation has to have the opposite in it. The other, the other side that we're dealing with is the hypotenuse because that's the only side where we're given information. If we weren't given any information for it, like the adjacent, we can't use it or it's not useful to use. Because we're dealing with opposite and hypotenuse, that tells us what ratio we're gonna use. So I'm just gonna write down the acronym just to help us remember. Again, you can always look back at the previous page as well. But because we're dealing with the opposite and hypotenuse, the only ratio that has O and H in it is sine. So that means sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse is the ratio that we're using. We can plug in our missing information or our given information. So theta is our angle, so our angle is 28. The opposite is unknown. The hypotenuse is 107. Here, we have one of two options for when finding a side. When the missing piece is on the top and we're given the bottom, so we do have a bottom number, we bring that bottom number up and we multiply. So we get 107 times sine 28 equals x. This I can just simplify or calculate. So 107 times sine 28 is, say we'll round to 50. So one of the key things when you're doing these equations and when you're solving and using your calculator, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Um, we talked about this in class. If you are unsure about if it's in degree mode or not, um, please take a picture with your calculator on. You can send it to me. You can check, you can check online um, by just Googling um, your model or the model number of your calculator. Um, but you do want to make sure it's in degree mode. So you should be getting 50 when you do this calculation. Moving on to B, same idea. We're finding this missing side X. So we need to label our sides. Again, across from 90 degrees is our hypotenuse. Across from our reference angle is our opposite. And then the last remaining side is our adjacent. Figure out what sides we're dealing with. In this case, O and A. Adjacent we're looking for, opposite we're given. So that means we have to use our tan ratio because tan is the only ratio that deals with O and A. Fill in our formula with our information. And now we see that the missing piece is on the bottom. So this is the other scenario that we could have when solving for a side, our missing piece is on the bottom. If that is the case, what we do is we switch tan 51 or whatever our ratio happens to be with our variable. So we get x equals 50 divided by tan 51. And now we can just solve. So 50 divided by tan 51, and we should get 40.5. And that is our unknown side or our adjacent side. So again, those are the two different scenarios that you could have. Um, the missing piece is on the top, like we saw in the first example, so you bring the bottom up and multiply, or the missing piece is on the bottom, so you switch the two and divide. Number two, we want to solve for the unknown angle. So solving for the unknown angle, again, we still have to label all of our sides. Across from 90 degrees is hypotenuse, our reference angle is still gonna be our unknown angle, even though we don't know it, we're still gonna use it as a reference. So across from our reference is opposite, and then beside our reference is adjacent. So here, the two sides that we're dealing with are adjacent and hypotenuse, because again, those are the two sides that we're given. So that ratio will then be cos, or cosine. So cosine theta equals A over H, 
cosine x equals 12 over 15. And now here we go into, if I want to solve for x, I need to move the cosine over. It becomes the inverse. So the inverse of cosine of 12 over 15. And when I solve that, sorry, I'm trying to make some space here. So when we solve that, second form cosine, 12 divided by 15, we get an angle of 37 degrees. So again, to get the inverse, um, you should be hitting shift or second, um, that second button or shift button on your calculator. Um, and you should see above your sine, cos, and tan, you should see buttons that sit, or writing that says sine negative one, cosine negative one, and tan negative one. So you have to hit that shift or second button and then press the correct ratio that you're dealing with. And again, it needs to be in degree, degree mode. For B, again, same idea. We're looking for this missing angle here. So let's label our sides to tell us what ratio we're going to use. Across from 90 is hypotenuse. Across from our reference is opposite. Beside our reference is adjacent. The two sides that we're dealing with, O and H, is sine. Because sine is the only ratio that has O and H in it. So sine x is equal to 5 over 12. Again, I'm going to move the sine over. It becomes sine negative 1, or the inverse of sine, 5 over 12. And then now this I can just calculate. One thing to keep in mind, even though it's sine negative 1, that does not mean it's sine to the power of negative 1. So just keep that in mind when you're calculating it. Do not hit sine and then do the power of negative 1. That will give you the wrong answer, or it will most likely give you an error. So shift and sine gives me sine negative one. Five divided by 12 equals roughly 20, say 25 degrees. So that is our missing angle. For three, three asks you to solve for all sides and angles using any method. So here we're given free reign to figure out what angles we want to, si want to find first and what sides, or then well, there's only really one side that we're looking for. So because we kind of have free reign, means it gives us multiple options when solving for the angles. So let's just say we're going to solve for this angle first. We want to still label our sides. So we have our hypotenuse, our opposite, and our adjacent. So the two sides that we're going to be dealing with are opposite and are adjacent. So that means we have to use tan theta equals O over A. We don't have our angle, so I'm going to say call it X. Opposite is 65. Adjacent is 123. Same as the previous examples for solving angles. Move that tan over, it becomes tan negative 1 of 65 over 123. Again, it's just a calculation, and you should get an angle of roughly 28 degrees. So I'm going to replace this x with a 28. If I want to find the other missing angle, I don't even have to use trig for this, because all angles in a triangle add to 180. So 180 minus 90 minus 28. gives me an angle of 62 degrees. So I don't even need to use trig to find that missing angle, and that's fine. You don't need to use trig always. Finally, I need to find the hypotenuse. So I have multiple angles that I can use as a reference angle, and depending on how I label it, I will have to change my sides. Because I've already labeled it based off of the one side, uh, I'm going to keep using 20 ang the angle of 28 as my reference angle. Now it depends. I know I have to solve, oops, 
I know I have to solve for the hypotenuse. So I know that limits me to which equations I can use. But now it just depends on do I use my adjacent or opposite. Again, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say in this case, we're going to use our op or adjacent. So in this case, actually I'll keep it color coded. Adjacent and opposite is cosine. So cosine theta equals a over h. Fill in our information, cosine theta. Theta is 28 equals 123 over h. Because our missing piece is on the bottom, we're going to switch the two and then divide. So 123 divided by cosine 28 will give me h. And I get a length of 139. So that means my hypotenuse is 139. So that's how you can use trig to find angles and sides, or right angle trig specifically. Moving on from that, we're going to look at non right angle triangles. So non right angle triangles focuses on sine law and cosine law. And those are specific to non right angle triangles. So you should not be using those three ratios or Sakatoa. You should be using the sine or cosine law. So looking at A, we want to solve for, in this case, our unknown side. Now, if you're not told what ratio or what law to use, I would say cosine law is easiest to check. Cosine law, you're looking for two things. I'll just write it down. So cosine law, you're either looking for your side angle side sandwich, or you're looking for all three sides. In this case, if I look at my angle, or either angle, I don't have a sandwich, it's not sandwiched between two known sides. The closest I can see is this angle because I know this side, but I don't know that side. So that doesn't help. Even with this angle, I know this side, but I don't have anything missing here, so that doesn't help me either. And I don't have all three sides, so that doesn't work. Because it doesn't work for cosine law, that means I must use sine law. So for sine law, remember sine law is where we dealt with pairs. Because we're looking for B, we know this has to be a half pair. That's the, that's the only half pair that we can have. So that means we must have a full pair somewhere else. In this case, it has to deal with the 36, but I am missing that angle A. So how do I figure out what angle A is? Because I need to know what that is in order to use sine law. And in order to find angle A, because I have two other angles in the triangle, I can use 180 minus 48 minus 25 to find that missing angle. And I get that, that missing angle is 107. So I now know what that missing angle is, and now I have a full pair. So in my sine law, sine a over little a equals sine big B over little b. I'm not going to worry about the c pair because, again, I don't have enough information for that, and I only want to deal with two pairs at a time. Once I write out my formula, I'm going to fill in my missing information. So sine a, remember capital letters are angles. So sine 1 over 107 over ang side A is 36. Sine B, so sine 48 over little b, which is unknown. Once we fill everything in, we cross multiply to get rid of these fractions. So we get b times sine 107 equals 36 times sine 48. To get b by itself now, I need to move this sine 107 over. When I move it over, it becomes division. So b equals 36 times sine 48 divided by sine 107, which will give me my b value. Actually, let me bring it up here. What I will do, and I would recommend solving the numerator or the top part of your fraction first. 
just again to make it a little bit easier when you calculate. So you should have 26.75 divided by sine 107, which is 0.956. So try to keep a couple decimal places if you do um, simplify it before you actually go through and solve. If you're doing it all at once, you don't have to worry about rounding. Um, but if you are doing it step by step, please make sure you keep a couple decimal places. And in the end, when you divide those two, you get 27.98. So basically 28 is the length of that side. And that's how you use the sine law to find a missing side. For B, B, we, we are looking for, again, a missing side, side C. Since we used sine law in the previous example, we know what we should be looking for for sine law. So let's check. I do have a half pair here, so, so that does check out, but I need to have a full pair somewhere else. Do I have a full pair with A? No, I am missing an angle. Do I have a full pair with B? No, I'm also missing an angle. Do I have enough information to find one of those angles? I do not. So in the last one, we were given two angles which we could use to solve for the third. In this case, I don't have the third angle, or a second angle even, so I can't solve for any other angle. So what that means is I can't use sine law. That only leaves me with one option, which is cosine law. And as well, this is where we see the side angle side sandwich. So we see a sandwiched angle, the two sides that make up an angle, we have that information. So this is what we're looking for if we're solving for a side using cosine law. So going back and picking out our cosine law formula for finding a side, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ac times cosine c. Now you may say, well, where did this formula come from? The one that we had in the previous page had a squared first. That is true, but the same formula applies for any side. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that the side you're looking for, in this case c, has to be paired up with the angle that we have, which we do. We do see that here. And then so in that case, we just switched the letters. So if we look at the, we write down what we had before, so I'm just writing down the formula that we had on the original page or the very first page. You could see that we were looking for side C. So that means everywhere there was a C in this original equation here, we switched with the A. So the A became a C. They are kind of out of order, but they all switched. So you can use the same formula and just kind of switch spots with what you're looking for. Or realistically, if you really wanted to, you could relabel it. Call it A, B, C, whatever you want, and then this would be, become A. So you could relabel it entirely if you want to fit kind of that pattern that we have. Either way you do it is up to you. But again, the main thing that we're looking for is that this side we're looking for pairs up with this angle, and the other two known sides are going to be in the other two spots. So we can go through and fill in our information. Realistically, again, little a is across from big A, so 26 squared plus, plus 12 squared. Again, don't worry if you get those mixed up, because when you're adding numbers, the order doesn't matter. Same thing for the second part here where you multiply two times a times c, the a and the c, it doesn't matter what order they're in when you're multiplying. Don't forget at the end, cosine c, or cosine angle c, so cosine 60, this does seem to be a spot that a lot of people miss. A lot of people tend to miss adding in that cosine 60 at the end. When I'm solving this, I do like to solve it in pieces. So I'm gonna solve the first part before the subtraction, and I'm going to solve everything after su the subtraction, just to make sure that I don't have any calculation errors. 
So I get 820 minus whatever in everything highlighted pink works out to be. So 2 times 26 times 12 times cosine 60 equals 312. C squared equals 508. And then to get C, I have to take the square root of this. So the square root of 508 gives me roughly 22.5. So that means that side C is 22.5. Lastly, for C, again, same idea. I need to find now a missing angle different from a missing side. So we could look for sine law because again, we are looking for pairs, so that tends to be easy. If we see we, this is our half pair, so that means we should have a full pair between the other two sides. And we see that if I look at B, I don't have this angle. And if I look at C, I don't have that angle. So I don't have a full pair to use. That means I can't use sine law. This then is an example of using cosine law because I have side, side, side. I have all three sides which I can use to find the missing angle. So that's what we're referring to when we talk about using, finding, or looking for side, or having all three sides to use cosine law. Because we're finding cosine A, this works well with the formula that I had on the first page. You could do the same thing, switch everything around. You're looking for angle A. Maybe you're looking for angle B and side B, so you just switch all the A's and the B's. Or you can erase these these labels and relabel it so A is always going to be the angle that you're looking for. Cosine A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared divided by 2BC. Again, the key thing is this side A is paired up with the angle that you're looking for. So cosine A equals B squared. B again is across from angle B, so 8 squared plus C, which is across from angle C, so plus 10 squared minus A, which is across from the angle we're looking for, minus 7 squared divided by 2 times 8 times 10. Cosine A equals, again, I'm going to simplify my two parts first, just to make it a little bit easier when I calculate. So 8 squared plus 10 squared minus 7 squared is 115 divided by 2 times 8 times 10 which is 160 okay, cosine a equals 115 divided by 160 and I get 0 0.71875 so this is too small to be my angle so that means I have to do one other thing. That one other thing, anytime we solve for an angle, we have to use the inverse. So I move the cosine over, it becomes cosine negative 1 of 0 0.71875. Second sine cosine, 0 0.71875, gives me an angle of 44 degrees. One thing that you can use as a kind of a check to make sure you're doing everything right and your calculations are good, this ratio when you divide should always be less than one. So that ratio when you divide, even this one as well, that should work out to be less than one. So if you, if you get something that's not less than one, then there is a chance that you've done calculations incorrect or you've plugged in your numbers incorrectly. The last part are two word problems. Um, so this is gonna be a challenge. So I'm gonna challenge you to try these on your own. Um, draw your triangles um, from this and then determine what ratio you have to use. So I am gonna suggest that you pause the video, try it on your own. Um, and then we'll come back with what the full solutions are. So 
So looking at the first challenge, you are out in a field flying your kite. You have just let out all 150 meters of your kite string. You estimate that the kite is at an angle of elevation from you of about 20 degrees. Can you calculate the height of your kite above the ground? So this is the image that you should be drawing based on that situation. Angle of elevation means from the horizontal or from the a flat line up, which we can see over here. So that's our 20 degrees. The height of the string is 50, and we're looking for the height of our kite off the ground. So we assume that the kite and the ground make a 90 degree angle. When we label our sides, we get that the kite string is 150 or our hypotenuse, and we're looking for the opposite. This means that we're using sine law, so we go through our standard calculations, plug in our information, or not, sorry, not sine law, sine ratio, plug in our information, we end up seeing that the missing piece is on the top, so that means we bring the bottom up and we multiply, and we get that the height of the kite is 51 meters above the ground. Looking at example six, Jill and her friends built an outdoor hockey rink. Their hockey goal line is five feet wide. Jill shoots a puck from a point where, from a point where the puck is five yards from one goal post and six yards from the other goal post. Within what angle must Jill make her shot to hit the net? So we see the length of the hockey rink or the hockey net right there. It's five meters. <coughs> Sorry, five feet. We then see that it, the puck here is five meters from one goal post, six meters from another, or feet. So given all that information, we do have to look for within what angle can she fire the puck to make sure that she hits the net. In this case, we have all three sides of our triangle, so that means we have to be using our cosine law. We don't have enough information to use sine law, and we don't have any information that tells us that this is a 90 degree triangle. So we use cosine law. Again, I just labeled my triangle so that the missing side or angle was A, which let me use the same equation from the note, or from this note. Filling in all my information, I found that when I got to the end and divided, my fraction or my ratio was less than one, so I knew I was on the right track, and then when I plugged it into the calculator and did the inverse of cosine of 0 0.28, I got 74 degrees. So that means that she has to take a shot within 74, within a 74 degree angle to make sure that she hits the net. And again, that's all for trigonometry. Again, making sure that you know how to use right angle trig, which is the Sakatoa, sine, cos, and tan ratio. And if you need and for non-right angle triangles, you can use the sine law or cosine law to find a missing side or a missing angle. Again, if you need more examples or you need more explanation, please go back and look at the previous lessons on these concepts. Mm -hmm.